Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a Q&A because I'll be honest, I don't know what else to make. I don't... I don't have any desire to go shopping right at the moment and do try-ons, although they're definitely coming. Um, I was going to do a vlog for this week, but in all honesty, the vlog would have been really boring. Um, as has been pointed out numerous times, I am the most boring person on the entire planet. And I don't really do anything exciting. And I am not about to go and go skydiving or whatever just to entertain you guys for a vlog. So, I asked for questions on my Instagram. And if you do wish to participate in things like this in the future, you can. All you have to do is follow me so that you know what I'm asking. My username is at underscore Danielle McAllister. I'll put it on the screen here. Um, so let's just get into it with the questions. There's quite a few. I'm not going to answer all of them because some of them are overly personal. The first question is, what plus size sewing accounts do you recommend IG or YouTube? I don't really have any. Um, I mean... Yes, it's very nice when watching sewing tutorials um, to see things being made for plus sizes and while that's how this channel started and how I'm not continuing that really anymore, um, I don't really watch sewing tutorials a whole lot. The one account that I follow is with Wendy or um, Annika Victoria and both are straight size women making clothes um wendy does a lot of like upcycling so does annika victoria um in they incorporate a lot of like sustainable practices into their sewing and a lot of it is stuff that can be applied for any size especially um annika's stuff because she does a lot of patterns on her own so it's just about finding measurements and figuring out what the right measurements are for you um, you just have to be willing to adapt the straight size stuff um, you can't not watch those things just because it's not made for a fat person um, there are ways easy ways to adapt and you got to be willing to try it uh what's my number one goal for 2020 to make more money i know that sounds very callous maybe uh but i'll be honest last year i survived on making twelve thousand dollars um total for the year or actually it was a little bit less than twelve thousand dollars i survived i paid my phone bill i paid my car insurance i paid for my car payments um i'm very thankful that like uh i don't necessarily have to pay the standard rent because I live with my mom um, but I do other things around the house that kind of make up for it and um, so I I only made twelve thousand dollars last year and I need to make more money than that like I can't long term survive on that um, it's not fair that I don't pay rent a lot of the time um, and so I have been working to build up the business side of things as well as figure out how my YouTube can be sustainable and make more money but um, not require like a video every day kind of thing. And actually I found that my ad revenue on YouTube is more steady by only posting one video a week gives it time to like marinate and gives it time for people to watch it um and sort of reach people so um that's why i've stuck with one video a week and it's more sustainable for me um so my my one number one goal this year is to just earn more money and that's what i've been focusing on so far it's been going pretty good um i've been i taught a shopify workshop uh, virtually which is a precursor to probably creating it turning into a course um, so that people can be in it and like build their stores 
um, for themselves. What is your favorite fast food? Um, well, you didn't say specifically restaurant, but my favorite fast food would be tacos from Taco Bell with their spicy ranch sauce on it. Do you ever start the dialogue with people on the street who stare or make fat phobic comments? I don't really experience this very much. Um, I've had a couple instances where people have like mood out their car at me as I'm walking down the street. Um, but they're in a moving vehicle and I'm not about to stop them and I was living in Toronto at the time which would be completely unsafe to approach them. Um, living in Kingston I don't really experience stares or anything like that however um, if someone were to say something like come up and start a conversation with me and say like I don't know something rude fat phobic whatever I would probably start a conversation although I would probably be quite defensive um, because that's sort of the situation you are on the defensive when someone just comes up to you on the street and is like, hey, you're fat, and like, yes, yes I am, thank you for noticing, you know? Uh, have you lived by yourself or with roommates before? I've lived by myself. Um, when I lived in Toronto, I lived on my own for most of the time that I was in an apartment. I did have my brother living with me for like four months while he went to school. Um, he didn't particularly like his program so he ended up leaving and I left shortly after I left the city shortly after I moved back here um, I had roommates when I lived in residence in college um, they weren't roommates I picked and they were let's just say not ideal but we didn't really have much to do with each other because we we're both on completely different schedules so it worked okay are you taking any vacations this year? If so, where? Um, I don't have any planned. I do need to get to Toronto at some point in the next probably month or so um, to get supplies for making some bags. I do want to ramp up bag making. Um, I make a lot of accessories right now in terms of like jewelry and hair and stuff but I've been making the same two types of bags for a couple of years and I'd like to add to that so the easiest place to buy um, the metal bits that I need is to go to Toronto um, and the thing is is like Toronto like driving to Toronto is a three hour drive away but it's such a long day because you're not just going to like one store going in buying all the things you have to go from store to store to store and it's a lot and the drive it's you know driving there can be three hours driving home can be five depending on the traffic so um, I do like to stay overnight so it's a matter of having the time and money to be able to be gone overnight having someone to be able to watch my dog or at least like hang out with her she gets really nervous when I leave overnight and I can't take her to the city with me because she gets even more nervous and would probably um, cause a big ruckus being left alone in a hotel room or something like that. So yeah, can't take her with me and uh, she doesn't like to be left alone. So next question. Um, okay, <sighs> next question. If you were granted three wishes, what would they be? Uh, okay. I always feel like when you're asked these questions, you're expected to be, like, super generous and, you know, not selfish with them and give away all the stuff. But I would wish that my student loans were paid off um, so I don't have that hanging over my head of, like, when will I be able to pay those. Um, I also wish that just life in general would be a little bit easier um i don't i don't know i would maybe want to save a wish for an emergency just to have in my back pocket as like a get out of jail free card what is your proudest achievement and what is your biggest regret i guess my proudest achievement is making it through last year i completed 
an entire year of being self-employed and paying for myself. I paid all of my own bills and while I only made 12 grand last year, I paid all of my bills and I didn't go into any additional debt. Um, not like anyone's gonna give me a credit card when I make so little money, but like I paid all my bills and I survived and now that was like my first real year of being self-employed and being self-sufficient um, self-sufficient to a point because I still live with my mother as you guys love to point out which is everybody has different living experiences and it is okay to still live where I live right now because it's what works for me right now and I don't really appreciate people putting their judgments on me and saying that basically what I have to say is not valid because I still live with my mom. I lived on my own for five or six years and so I know how to be a real grown-up and I am a real grown-up. I have a car payment, I cook meals for myself, like I cook meals for my entire family, <laughs> like um, I you're still a valid human being if you live with your parents. Um, now, if I didn't have a job and I wasn't generating income and I was constantly asking her for money, I would be concerned, but I don't do that, so. All right. Oh, biggest regret. Um, anything I've ever said that was cruel and judgmental that I still think about now, those are my biggest regrets. Um, how long have you had, uh, lymphedema? I have lipedema and it's a struggle to love my legs. I don't love my legs either. I just tolerate them, I guess. Um, I know that it's something that I can't control in the way that I don't have access to turn it off. Like, I can't get rid of it. It's with me forever and I need to deal with it, right? I have had lymphedema, well, it's been, um... It's always been there because it's a hereditary thing, so like I was always going to end up with it. There's not much I could control about that. However, it presented itself when I sort of hit puberty, where I noticed that my, at the end of the day, my legs would be quite swollen, my socks would leave like deep dents in my ankles. Um, it got worse once I went to college because even then like I was walking a lot. Um, and that's not actually something that prevents lymphedema. Um, it, because the way my, the fluids collect, it can make it worse sometimes. I mostly have to like leave my legs raised up. So um, sitting at a desk like this and my feet down is hard and I do have to take breaks. Um, but I have been living with it since I was mm, probably 12 or 13. And it's just something you have to get used to and you just have to do things to prevent um, further damage. Um, and I would say moisturize your legs because the one thing I learned from my recent scare was that if the skin gets like pulled tight and cracks and is dry, it's easy for infection to get in. And so moisturize your legs and moisturize the part of your body that is like... Um, has the lymphedema in it because that will prevent things in the future. What is your favorite candy or chocolate? Um, I am going to apologize right now because you can't actually get it for yourself. She doesn't sell online, I don't think anyway. Um, it is Coco Bistro's spicy caramel chocolate cluster. So basically it is or like it's, it's a bark almost, and there is um, like a toffee caramel, sometimes it's chewy, sometimes it's, it's more crunchy, chocolate, and then when you, when it gets in your mouth and like it hits the back of your throat, it's a little like spicy, oh my god, it's so good, I'm absolutely obsessed, it's been forever since I had any, um, so I think I need to get some. Someone asked me in a DM, how would you describe your style? Um, comfortable? yeah comfortable um maybe slightly edgy like very ever so slightly like i love band t-shirts i love a leather jacket um i only own sneakers so you're not gonna catch me in heels um 
comfortable, slightly edgy, casual, definitely very casual, although I do love a good dress pant with some good pockets where you can put your hands in the pockets and just like good photo op. So someone asked, how long have you been making YouTube videos? And I started my channel March 6th, 2014. I'm actually looking at the YouTube um, back end right now. I'm in YouTube studio. And um, wow, the, the stats. So I'm looking at the lifetime of my channel. We currently have 19,535 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. We're so close to 20,000. It makes me so happy. Um, all right, we have a total of 3.2 million views. That's so like astonishing. We have uh, watch time hours are uh, 236, or sorry, 263.3 thousand watch time hours. Uh, and my estimated total revenue for that entire six years is ten thousand one hundred and twenty seven dollars um that is of course over six years i did not earn any ad revenue for probably the first three of those um maybe two and a half and then it kind of blew up a couple years ago and we've been going strong ever since i love making youtube videos and it makes me very happy to see the channel growing and new people coming in so all right so someone asked have you heard about Ander amberlynn reed and foodie beauty any thoughts um no i in particular okay here are my thoughts i do not appreciate being compared to amberlynn um because she is her her own human and i am not her and not all fat people are the same and i do not appreciate being lumped in together i don't know anything about foodie beauty um and i've never really watched any of their videos and i'm not going to give an opinion on someone else's life that i don't know so those are my thoughts this person i recognize their name they comment all the time and so they asked do you get more negative comments than positive i hope it's positive it depends it entirely depends um when i put up a video i can kind of tell that the initial reaction is going to be a gut of holy shit i can't believe you said that or um people who are who think they're better than you and commenting to make themselves feel better as opposed to learning from what i've said and um i guess so in that respect sometimes the negativity definitely outweighs the positivity but then when i post a fashion video or um just like something basic where it's like i bought these clothes or I got this makeup kind of thing those are usually generally positive because people just want to watch them feel good shop and move on with their lives they're not there to argue and prove a point you know okay and this is the last question uh, so they asked would you rather upcycle a piece of clothing or make it yourself love your channel thank you um, uh, well it really it really does depend I like making clothes directly from fabric when it's for myself because I my body takes up a lot of fabric and it's gonna be really hard to upcycle something to fit me so I have to almost look at upcycling flat things like fabric that was sent to the thrift store or bed sheets or um, tablecloths and curtains and things like that and um, if I'm gonna do that then you have to make sure that you're going to get enough fabric out of it and sometimes it's not possible now if i'm making things um like products then i would much rather upcycle because i just feel like there's already so much so many new things out in the world that we can 
make the th the things that are going to the thrift store we can reuse them they're all not all going to go to good homes where they want to wear them and you know they they appreciate the garment as it is a lot of stuff goes to the thrift store that isn't wearable because it's not fixed or it has holes and you can't fix it so if i purchase things like that and i upcycle them instead of it ending up in a landfill um i can keep the cycle going and it's about creating a more circular economy versus a um wear it throw it out and the life cycle is over you know like linear is like you bought it you wear it you throw it out versus circular where you buy it then maybe it goes to the thrift store or you do a clothing swap or you sell it on Poshmark something like that and then another person gets it and they love it and they wear it but maybe they need it to be altered a little so they take it to their tailor and their tailor sorts it out they fix they fix it they take it in whatever and then that person continues loving and wearing it and when they're done with it they donate it they sell it whatever they cut it apart they turn it into something new that is like keeping the circle going until that fabric is like falling apart and literally cannot be used anymore then it can keep going in a circle um that's more of an oval but you know what i mean a circle and i think that's really important with clothing especially because we put so many chemicals into clothing now to keep them soft to keep them color fast it could doesn't matter if it's cotton if it's not organic and organic dyes and all of these things you're putting poison back into the planet just by putting in a landfill based on the chemicals that were used to treat the fabric and i understand certain things need to be chemical treated especially children's clothing needs to be flame retardant so you know it's just it needs to be it needs to keep going keep keep going in a circle and keep passing along to the next person um to be used in whatever way they can use it so anyway those are my thoughts um on the same vein i have some clothes that i cleared out of my closet a while ago and i was considering starting a poshmark where i could sell those clothes um obviously ones with like stains and things like that i won't um but because ugh, like big boob girls you know you know my struggle you drop something, your boobs catch it, there's a stain. It just, it happens. But I have lots of clothes that are in good condition. And I'm wondering if you guys would be interested in shopping through my closet. If you're the same size as me or similar size. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Because if it's a good enough reception, I guess, um, I will create a Poshmark closet. All right? Um, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!